Hello everyone. It's about 10 a.m. Uh, on November the 4th, uh, 2015, and um, uh, we're going to do a little uh, uh, prediction of this uh, coming winter, so the potential for snow in the Washington, uh, D.C. metro area, uh, particularly in the uh, uh, Northern Virginia, Arlington, Alexandria uh, area. And um, this week, uh, they're predicting unusually warm temperatures uh, for November. Possibly Friday, we may hit 80 degrees. So it's a good good week to predict uh, about uh, how much snow we're going to get uh, this winter. Okay, um, I've been doing quite a bit of research uh, over the last uh, month, uh, doing a, a lot of statistical analysis of. Uh, of uh, trends uh, at the Washington Reagan National Airport. I've done a, a few videos uh, on that. And so some of what I'm going to be telling you today is the results of that re research, which is uh, kind of unique uh, to uh, DelrayVAWeather.com. And then I've also uh, factored in uh, some other, uh, other models uh, that seem to uh, correlate with uh, what I've been finding in the data. Okay, uh, there is a, uh, a climate model um, that is uh, run by the uh, uh, Japanese uh, Meteorology uh, Office. Uh, uh, it's called JAMS Tech, and um, so I did some reviews of uh, of that model. And um, what uh, their latest prediction, which came out October the twenty third, uh, twenty fifteen, uh, says this that that the El Nino uh, will reach its peak in boreal fall, that's northern hemisphere fall, and will keep its amplitude until boreal winter, that's uh, northern hemi hemisphere winter. And so that will be uh, a fairly strong El Nino throughout the winter. Uh, the present El Nino uh, may turn to an El Nino Maduki uh, in boreal spring. Uh, Madu Basically, you can't just look at magnitude of El Ninos. This is going to be one of the strongest El Ninos in record, but you can't really look at uh, the strength and compare it to other similar uh, years of El Nino of similar strength. You really have to look at where is the warm wa water positioned along the equatorial Pacific. And um, the Mo Modoki um, El Nino positions the warm water further west. A traditional El Nino, the, the warmest water is smack up against uh, the South American uh, Pacific coast. What we have now is um, what appears to be a transitioning from that traditional, which we had uh, through the summer, to what uh, people refer to as a hybrid uh, El Nino, and uh, and it looks like it will will pass through the hybrid uh, area, and eventually end up in the more uh, western to central Pacific uh, as a uh, as a uh, Madoki uh, El Nino, and that's kind of important to predict uh, what it's going to be doing uh, this winter. Okay, based on. Uh, the JAMS Tech uh, model, uh, they're predicting that northern Europe, northeastern Russia, s southern China, and the U.S. will be have a colder than normal uh, winter. And uh, that actually uh, fits to what I have been finding with my, uh, my research uh, in general, uh, that uh, El Nino's uh, in the D.C. area for sure, uh, rather than producing a warmer than average winter, actually produce a colder than average winter. They've also found, the model has found that northern Europe and eastern uh, United States will experience a wetter than normal, normal uh, winter condition. And that also fits with the research that I've been doing. Uh, that, uh, and generally everybody accepts that, the, uh, that El Ninos in general will bring uh, wetter conditions to the north, uh, northwest area, uh, parts of California through the southwest, and up the east coast. 
Okay, now this uh, this shows maps that are produced uh, by Jamstack uh, models, and uh, the two maps are the uh, what is being projected uh, for December, uh, January, and February 2015-16 uh, winter. And uh, on the left here, uh, this is the projection for uh, the uh, uh, how wet it will be in the various areas of the world, and this is this is uh, the uh, uh, the difference between the normal climatological um, amounts. So it's absolutely predicting that the along the East Coast, uh, down through Florida, we'll have a, uh, a wetter uh, uh, winter time. And uh, on the right side, it, it predicts the uh, uh, two meter temperature uh, uh, possibilities and wherever you see the blue here means it's going to be below the normal temperatures uh, for that uh, for the winter and as you can see we are right here in the, the pale blue it's probably like a tenth of a degree or, or so uh, cooler so it is projecting that it's going to be a cooler than normal winter Now, I want to go through to uh, show you what some of the different types of El Ninos, and, and that's what, what I was saying earlier, that it really is not so much the magnitude of the El Nino as where the warm water is positioned. And um, up here in the uh, upper left, you'll see what's uh, the traditional uh, El Nino uh, position. Uh, it's uh, east-based. You see the, the bright red in this area smack up against the... Uh, South American, Pacific South American coast. And um, when you have the traditional base um, El Nino, the winters uh, in the United States look something like this. We have basically a warmer to average winter in, uh, in the Virginia area, uh, much warmer in the northern section of the United States. Okay, when we have a, a hybrid uh, El Nino, which uh, shifts the warm water further west, as you can see, uh, it, it really does change the, the effect on the United States. It, it definitely shows that the eastern part uh, and the so southern part of the United States is cooler than uh, average. Uh, the northwestern area is slightly warmer than average, and, and the Midwest, upper Midwest is about average uh, uh, temperatures. Okay, finally, we have the Moduki, which shifts the, uh, uh, um, the warmth uh, clearly in the center. There's nothing that, that sh is, is in the uh, uh, eastern part of the Pacific. It's all in the central Pacific. And that's when you get the coldest winters. Uh, when you have a Moduki, uh, you get much colder temperatures in the east and the south. And uh, uh, you know, warmer in the northwest and and northern California area, and also a bit colder in in the upper uh, Midwest. This uh, this is a basically a, a general graph that shows the different areas of uh, of in the Pacific of different types of El Ninos, and the traditional El Nino in the and this uh, one plus two area is where you will see the warmest water, and we really don't have that. This is this is the current model um, from the uh, uh, Jams Tech uh, uh, output, and it shows the current <coughs> current uh, positioning of the warmest water. And if you notice here, uh, the the really the center of the the warm water has shifted much further. Uh, to the west, and let me switch to this. This will show it even more. This was <clears throat> this is a, the graph of the El Nino about a month ago, and it shows that the warm water was clearly up against the uh, uh, South American uh, Pacific South American coast, and the the center of this was over in this area. <clears throat> area. This is uh, the latest projection, and if you notice, the the center of of the warmest part is shift has been shifted a little further west. This area here, 
which was uh, a pretty extensive warming uh, along this part, has uh, showed uh, a weakening. And eventually this is going to sort of separate. We're not going to see um, much indication of warmer water here. So um, during the last four weeks, and this is actually from the uh, uh, Climate <coughs> Prediction Center's latest uh, uh, publication just came out in uh, the 2nd of November. They have uh, specified that there's a cooling in the eastern equatorial Pacific. That's what we're talking about along this. This is the eastern equatorial Pacific. So we're seeing a cooling in that area. A warming in the central Pacific, and that's what we're seeing in this area, and that's what's required to move from a traditional to a hybrid to a Modoki um, El Nino. Uh, it implies a transition from traditional to hybrid El Nino at least through the first part of winter. Jamtech uh, is saying that um, it won't get to a, a Modoki uh, uh, El Nino until the spring. It fits with the uh, Jamtech prediction because they are predicting it to shift to uh, the Modoki uh, uh, th throughout the winter. Uh, and um, it implies a cooler, wetter December, February, March for Washington, D.C. And that's from our the previous map <coughs> that we showed. So uh, we definitely are, are beginning to see uh, this shift, which is definitely um, uh, starting to fit in with what, what some of my research, uh, uh, local research, uh, has said. Okay, so where does that leave us with respect to uh, snow predictions? Well, this is the conclusions that I've reached. And we're talking about December, January, February snow t statistics, though there's some indication that, that uh, the winter may be actually a little longer. It may actually extend into March um, this year. Uh, the El Nino years, in El Nino years, the average uh, snowfall is uh, uh, 20.4 inches with a median of 10.2 inches. In non-El Nino years, the average snowfall is 9.8 inches with a median of 4.6 inches. So just in general, when you're in an El Nino year, uh, in the D.C. area, you can expect more snow, uh, at least on a season, seasonal basis. Okay, last year, uh, winter 2014-15, uh, uh, we saw 18 inches of snow, which is above average. Um, that Last year, the winter was not officially an El Nino winter. But if you look at the uh, El Nino index for last year, it was very, very close. It almost was a, uh, a w at least a weak El Nino year. Okay, the po I, I found that um, with positive Pacific North American October average index, that's the, referred to as the PNA, when it occurs in an El Nino year, it correlates well with a higher than average snowfall in the DC area. Um, October uh, 2015, the average PNA, that's as of a, a day or so ago is when they, they did the calculations, it came in at a plus 1.78, which puts that, this uh, PNA in a very positive uh, uh, value. Uh, actually, it's among the, the top uh, half a dozen uh, since 1951 in October. So it is a very, very, very positive PNA uh, this year. The El Nino years with positive uh, October PNA uh, averaged 25.7 inches of snow with a mean of 23.9. That So that is saying that, you know, we set up here uh, average in, is 20.4 in an El Nino year, but when you have a positive PNA in October, that average goes up to 25.7. In El Nino years with negative October PNA, the average is 12. So it, it really, when you have a positive PNA in October in an El Nino year, you've got a, a much greater increase uh, of, of 
higher chance of getting substantially above uh, the climatological average for the DC area, which is 15 inches. Uh, from my calculations, there is a 71% uh, chance we will get more than 18 inches, uh, which is was the last year's snowfall. So we have a 71% chance of exceeding uh, what the amount of snow we got last year. Now something else, uh, like I said, you can't just look at uh, the magnitude of El Ninos. A lot of people are comparing this El Nino to the 1997-98 El Nino, in which DC got no snow, zero snow. And um, uh, the, the, the problem with doing that is it really, depending upon where that El Nino is located going into win winter, really changes its effect on the East Coast. A lot of meteorologists, and um, myself included, believe that this El Nino resembles the one that we had in 2009-10. Uh, uh, and if you remember, that was the winter we got Snowmageddon. Uh, we got, uh, I think, a seasonal snowfall of about 56 inches of snow in, in the D.C. area. And by the way, we also got a snowfall in December, uh, before Christmas. Uh, the amount in December of that year was actually 16 inches. And um, so uh, with a hybrid, with a positive October PNA, was, it was what we had back in 2009-10. In, in, uh, and, um, and so that is the same as what we are going to be having this year. So I think that it's going to resemble more of the 2009-2010 uh, El Nino. From that, uh, and from my actual, my uh, very local research, uh, it, there is a higher probability of snow before Christmas this winter. It may not be much, uh, but it could be a significant uh, snowfall. And so we're talking potentially, um, you know, anywhere between the, like the 25th of November through the 25th of December, I, I do think we're going to have a... Uh, 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 at least one uh, snowstorm that will accumulate a significant amount of snow. Probably if we have something like that, it may be only uh, like uh, five inches or less. But um, uh, still, it's something to, to bear in mind if you, if you have uh, travel plans in, um, in December, it, you may be uh, dealing with some snow. The harshest part of the winter will probably be February, and it may extend uh, through most of March. And that's actually from the research that I've done. Um, it, it seems like in El Nino years, the winter is shifted uh, back towards March. Normally, in a non-El Nino year, you're, the harshest part of the winter is, is in January. But in El Nino years in general, it seems like the harshest part of the winter is February. And of course, if you remember, Snowmageddon occurred uh, February uh, 2010. And so that also fits. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, uh, so the takeaway is better chance we're going to have uh, a much higher than average snowfall uh, this uh, winter season. And uh, possibly we may see an early, earlier than normal uh, snowfall, possibly in uh, uh, late uh, um, November through uh, Christmas. Uh, and um, so if you have any questions about this prediction, uh, just give me a tweet, at Pat Penn, that's P-A-T-P-E-N-D, and uh, I'll answer them. Thanks a lot.